Yo, what's up, guys? What's up? Welcome, welcome. Just got to go through my my daily test or my test of uh, making sure this is all working. Also, I need to go live on Twitch. I've been uh, Twitch streaming or not Twitch, uh, TikTok, TikTok. I have the uh, I just got the 10K followers on TikTok, so I'm able to stream on there as well, which is cool. So let me just make sure we're good on Twitch and YouTube and then we'll be good. All right, YouTube looks good. Uh, wait, let me do uh, marks. All right, let's check out Twitch. It's so good. I Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. All right, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Yo, Xavi, what's good? What's, br what's good, brother? good y'all um all right let's get this going so uh welcome back it's thursday 5 p.m est this is what we do and uh hold on sorry i just need to make sure i'm live on tiktok as well uh, following yep i'm here i'm here sick Okay, so what's up guys, what's up? Uh, today we got a good one, I got some good stuff planned out. I'm gonna be talking about a few different things and I'm gonna try to get super educational on it, you know? Um, I know I know, I like to ramble and have a good time and it's all, it's all really great and fun, but um, I feel like something that I've realized is maybe that I feel like I maybe gloss over like super foundational parts of music production, maybe because to me it's like second nature or something that I've don't see as like super important. But um, sometimes people will, like ask me about something. And I'll be like, oh, my God, like I, I didn't even like talk about that or like why, you know, so I'm going to try to get into the why of things today. So. Um, just for starts. Um, I know we've made kicks on this a lot. I'm going to just start with this kick that I made off camera. I really love the way it sounds. Let's also make sure that the sound actually works. It should. It should. Um. Yeah, we're good. We're locked in. We're locked in. All right, so this is the kick we're going to be working on or working around today. This thing just sounds awesome I, I love it um quick breakdown of the oops what am i uh what am i doing need restream open okay quick breakdown of the kick we have uh this kick and a sampler from our upcoming pack and i have a filter on it oh let me turn off this uh air conditioner all right i'm hearing on uh i'm hearing on on TikTok, you can't hear it. Hold on, let me let me figure this out. Can you not hear me? No, you can hear me. Okay. Let's uh let's figure this out. One sec. Okay. Um, Okay. That should be good. All right. On TikTok, let me know if you guys can hear that. Good? We good? I guess something happened with my, uh, sick, sick. Something happened with my, uh, like my interface or whatever. It's all good. All right. So this is the kick we got. We have a kick and a sampler. This is from a, uh, this is how the kick sounds normally. There's a lot of like air behind it, which is great. I love the way that sounds. But um, sometimes when there's too much going on, like I like adding that when I'm actually sound designing because it sounds really good. But um, that's why I like to throw it in a sampler because then I can go to this low pass filter. And since we're using MIDI, there is a built-in envelope inside the sampler. 
So if we turn this filter envelope on and we drag the low pass down, you're just hearing the low end. But if we take this amount, Now this, every time the MIDI is triggered, this envelope is trigger. You amazing bro, mum's life, sick. Love that. Okay, uh, so let's go back. Then we have this high rhythm. Oops, let me make sure this is post effects on both these. Then we have this high rhythm, which is receiving, there's nothing on the track, but it's receiving audio from the original kick. <laughs> Yo, these are the Odyssey LDCXs. So everybody, <laughs> I swear to God, everybody comments about my headphones at least twice a video, but they're absolutely the best headphones I've ever used. So I'm addressing it now. Best headphones I've ever used. They're so good. They never give me a headache. And that's the most important thing. So I'm working on the, I'm working on these headphones like all day. So they are beefy. Like, they're huge. I have a normal sized head. These are gigantic. I know I'm aware, but they're so sick and they're kind of expensive. I, I wish I had the closed back versions, but it's whatever. These, they're still sick. So we have a rhythm. This is like a high to mid rhythm. And then we have like a low rumble. And then we have like this weird stereo groove. And together it sounds so crispy. Sounds really good. All right, so the first thing I wanna go over is sort of a little insight to how I make some of these racks. Uh, I want to make an open hat pattern. So some of the instrument racks that we have on our site, um, I feel like a lot of people don't really either know how to use them or aren't interested in using them. But for example, if we go into the hard dance destruction um, suite, because this is the only one that's out right now. Um, if we go to Ableton instrument racks and then this like this open hat generator, if I drag this onto a MIDI track there inside. There is a drum rack with two. Uh, there's a drum rack with two open hat samplers. And basically the beauty of this is if I go to make an open hat pattern, so I'm just gonna place MIDI notes on the upbeat. And if we listen to this, that's really good. But let's say we're like, all right, that's the pattern, but I wanna change the sound. I'll just twist this knob, this o OH1 select, open hat one select. We can adjust the pitch. We can add more attack. Tighten it up. Add some reverb. Add some echo or delay. Add some drive. And the best part about this rack and, and just all Ableton racks in general is this random button up here. I just love it so much because sometimes I'm, I'm just like, I get lazy and I'm like, all right, let me just randomize everything. So let me make this a little bit of a longer pattern and then you can see how we can introduce this second hat. So I'm gonna duplicate this across. And let's put ones there. And there. So if we listen to this pattern here, let's actually shorten it. So now we have two hats and this is how we can sort of create like a variation. So if I want to randomize it from here.
So I like this first hat, but the second hat I want to be like splashier. Where is it? I think, I think that one. So what I'm gonna do is keep, I'm gonna automate this decay. So it's really cool. You can just get super creative with this. So essentially that's how um, all of these instrument racks are built. And I'm gonna just quick walk you through how I would make something like this with open hats. So let's go ahead and delete this. We'll delete this MIDI clip. And the first thing I'm gonna start with is a drum rack. So if we're doing open hats, uh, what, I, what I want is I wanna have two open hats just like that one is built. So I'm gonna put a sampler on one of the pads at C1 and then I'm gonna put it on another pad in C2. So this is really, um, for me, I love this because when you make a MIDI clip, you can see there's two possible options of where you can put notes. So this makes it really easy for me to plug in uh, drum notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this techno pack because there's a lot of really sick open hats in here. Um, and I just love the way they sound. So let's say I'll put these techno open hats in the first sampler. So let me make sure I'm on. Okay, I'm clicked on the first sampler. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag in all these open hats into the sampler. And now you'll see it says 56 of 56 samples are selected. And we can double check that if we pop this zone open, we can see all the different samples that are inside of this rack. So you can load up this sampler with I think up to 127 sounds. And, but the only problem is, is if you press play, I'm not gonna do it because it'll blow your ears out. It's gonna play all of these sounds at the same time. So what we're gonna do is select all of these and where it says key, this is say velocity. We're gonna go over here to, it says selector. So it's SEL. We're gonna click on that. And if we have all of these selected, I think, okay, I think you can right click here. Yeah, distribute ranges equally. And now on TikTok, that might be a little hard to see because the way the uh, the way it's broken down. So let me actually show you guys. I'll drag it over. So you can see that there is like this descending stepped line that's uh, that's going on, and this is kind of useless information. But you'll notice at the top there's this blue vertical bar that like nobody ever sees. Like I honestly before I before I knew about this, I was like, I would have never seen this thing. So on top of never being able to see this in general, I didn't know that you could right click and map to macro one. So now we have a sample selector knob. So if we make this open hat pattern like this and we solo this, Wherever this light blue little ticker is, is whatever it's hovering over is the sound it's gonna play. So as we move this uh, macro, you can see now it's over top of the second one. So Foss, this is recorded. Um, I'm actually streaming on uh, YouTube and Twitch as well. So if you wanna see like the full, like, I don't know, like the widescreen version or not like the phone version, it's, uh, it's on Twitch and YouTube and it's recorded, uh, all the streams are recorded there. So that's awesome, that's great. So I'll call this open hat one. And now let's go to this second sampler and I'll do uh, I'll do some open hats from our other sample pack, the uh, Hard Dance Destruction one that's out on the site. So I'll drag these into the sampler, and with the zone still open, you can see it's it's actually 
it, it, you can see things like very easily when it, once it's open. But for whatever reason, anytime the zone is open with a sampler, it drives me nuts. But um, it's whatever. Once it's open, I'm like, OK, I can see everything now. So I'm going to do the same thing for this uh, for the second sampler. I'm going to select all go to the selector tab, right click distribute ranges equally. And then I'm going to right click on this little selector light blue thing. And I'm going to map this to macro two. So then we'll go to the first macro and we'll call this OH1 select. And then macro two will be OH2 select. So then let's rename this OH2. So that is essentially how you make a sample selecting rack. Um, but the beauty with the Ableton racks is we can take it even further. So let's go ahead and make that pattern again. And we'll do one here. So the next thing I want to be able to do is control the attack and the uh, decay. So I'm going to go to the first sampler. I'll go to the filter and I'm going to drag the sustain all the way down. And then I'm going to map. I'm going to right click on attack map to macro three, right click on decay map to macro four. So we'll rename this attack decay. And before I go and map the other sampler, what I want to do is find my ranges. So the way I find my ranges is I will drag this decay knob all the way down. So you can't hear anything because there's zero dBs or the sustain is all the way down. The decay is at negative one. So I'm going to hit this map button and. On TikTok, I think you can see it. I'll slide this over a bit. So I'm going to hit the map button and this is basically going to allow us to uh, control the ranges for these macro knobs. So right where it says decay, I have this macro knob all the way to the left. So I want to focus on what is the minimal value that I can have this uh, decay be. So I'm just going to play it and I'm going to mute this second hat for a little. So let's just say 200 milliseconds is the shortest I'd want my hats. And now what I'm going to do is drag it all the way to the right. 60 seconds is ridiculous. These hats are like not even a half second. So I'm going to drag the max value all the way down until it starts to affect something. So let's just say it's a second. So I'm going to type in a thousand. That's a one second. Now let's do the same thing for the attack. The attack, the minimal value, I'm going to leave it zero and the max. I'm just going to turn this knob all the way to the right and start dragging this value down. So let's just say 50 milliseconds. So the reason why I do that is so every single position these macro knobs are in is a usable position. So then once I have uh, the one open hat set up, what I'm going to do is. Go to open hat one, find this attack in this decay routing or macro. I'm going to right click and do map to all siblings, and I'm going to do the same thing for decay. So then if we go to open hat two, you'll notice that the second open hat is also mapped as well. And if we hit map uh, on the actual drum rack, uh, all the parameters are the same as the first one. So that's like saves a lot of time. So now as we're picking which hat we want to pick now as we're selecting which hat we want to select, we can adjust the attack and decay as well. So I'm going to turn up open hat one seems to be a little quieter. OK, so that sounds pretty good right there. 
The next thing I want to do is the pitch, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to just work on open hat one, then I'm going to map to all siblings. So this is a pretty crazy trick. Um, I don't know how I discovered this, but inside sampler, you can adjust the pitch per semitone. But I wanted to have like a coarse pitch, like a gradually pitching up, uh, not just like just like semitone snaps, because there's a lot of, you know, pitches and tones in between that uh, I'd like to have. So basically what I do is I'll go to, let's see. Okay, it's, I'll go to the pitch slash oscillator tab. Ha! Pitch slash os tab or oscillator tab. Then what I'm gonna do is take the sustain all the way up and I'm gonna take this amount to 12. So what we can do is we can change the pitch by actually, um, what is this? We can change the pitch by mapping all three of these knobs or all three of these to the same macro knob. So we'll call this pitch. So you'll see I mapped the initial peak and sustain to macro five. And now you can see this horizontal line is moving up and down. So since we set the amount to plus 12, it can go negative 12 down, positive 12 up. So And that's how we do like a course pitch uh, type thing in, uh, in, in sampler. So then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to right click and map copy value to siblings map to all siblings who actually I don't want to map to all siblings because I want to go and we're going to map this to macro six for the uh, for the second hat. So then what we can do as well is add a reverb and an echo. And actually what I want to do is add them to both. So I'm going to map, I'm going to group everything and then map it. So we're going to take all the macros and basically copy them to that like parent group because then I can put the reverb echo and I'll do this industrial hat bus all outside. So it's affecting everything. And then this is basically the easy part. I'll just map um, the reverb to macro seven and then the echo to macro eight. And I'm not going to have the drive. I'll just keep a limiter here. Then I'm going to go into the map and for the range of the dry wet, I'm gonna just set the max to 50 for the reverb and like 40 for the echo because I don't need it to go all the way to 100. So then just to be fancy, I'll go in and I'll color everything based on what it is affecting. So all of these macro knobs are affecting the actual source sound and these are like spatial effects. And that is basically how I make these instrument racks. And it's so, so helpful because you can save this and if you're like, oh, I want an open hat, you're like, boom. And like, you just, you don't know what you're gonna get. Like that sounds cool. So I'm going to do another one, except I'm going to fly through this. So drum rack sampler on each drum rack. And then we're going to take a bunch of claps. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I have a bunch of like random sound design claps. 
So we'll put like a hundred claps in the first one and then bunch in the second one. And then we're gonna go open the zone, hit select, distribute ranges equally, take the first little selector, map to macro one, do the same thing for the, se uh, the second clap selector. And then we'll map this to macro two. Clap one, clap two, and then, oh my God, it crashed. You're kidding. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm just moving too fast. I'm too quick like that. I don't think I don't think uh I don't think Ableton's crashed on stream yet. It's kind of crazy. I don't think it matters though because I wasn't using any third party stuff, so it should just like pick up right where I left off. Um Yeah, we're good. We'll call this clap 2. I really like this industrial hat bus for things. So I'm gonna add an echo and a reverb. And then we have our drive. So let me map. Let's actually do the pitch, pitch thing first. So we'll go to pitch, set the range to, tw or set the range to 12. And then we're on clap two. Let's go to clap one and we'll map initial peak and sustain Ooh. initial peak and sustain all to macro three false clap one pitch. And then we're going to do the same for clap two. We're going to map initial peak and sustain to macro four. We'll call this clap two pitch. Then we'll map the reverb to macro five. Oops, didn't mean to randomize it. I'm gonna set this range to 50, and then we're gonna do the same thing for the echo. We're gonna map that to six, set the range to 40. I've done this so many times that I just like know what I want. So then we're gonna go to the industrial hat bus, and I'm gonna set the drive to macro six, and then the dry wet to macro eight. So drive, drive, dry, wet. Turn this down, we'll call this reverb, echo. Let's just color these real quick. And this is essentially how I do all of my racks. Um, I love making drums in MIDI. I think it just speeds the process up like crazy. Clap one, clap two. So let's go ahead and we'll make a clap pattern with this new rack we made. So uh, 40 mic mic, no, I'm not constantly saving at all. I forget all the time, but Ableton, um, anytime Ableton crashes, it recovers the project based on your undo history. So if I hit like command Z, I'm pretty sure it's it like saves that um, like automatically. Ableton is really good with that kind of stuff, I will say. But if you're like sound designing on Serum or some third party plugin, it, it's not going to save that stuff but I mostly just use Ableton stock, so it's not an issue. So let's add a little off. All right, now to adjust the volume, I wanna actually add velocity on here. So I'm going to set the velocity of each one of these samplers to like 40%. Did it not? Oh, wait a minute. I'm dumb because all of these effects are in the one clap. All right, I need to group this and then just take everything that's already macroed and then macro it over once more so we can 
have the effects affecting not just the one clap, but the entire drum bus as a whole. So then we're going to need to remap these. Try. Okay. Confused. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's way too much, and that's why. All right, set the reverb range to 50. Here's a donut. How how are how do people like give gifts? So that's exactly how I make these racks. And uh, like I said, it's kind of time consuming. It's maybe, I don't know, it, it's, it's like there's faster ways to get to the end result. But I feel like if you put that work in on the first time, then once the second time goes around, you're like, this is so much faster. It's not even close. So let's just say that's our claps. I'm going to open up a closed hat rack that we have this is the hard dance destruction closed hat generator um this is also on the site and just so incredible let's turn off these claps for a second and let's start making a closed hat pattern so to make a closed hat pattern i'm just going to copy 16th notes over on this closed hat and what i normally like to do is add another hat on the upbeat. So we get some sort of uh, like accented rhythm. So maybe I'll turn the velocity down of these closed. See, now we, ha we get that accent on the upbeat. Oh, let me answer some of these questions. Um, Smash the like to the beat of the hat. <laughs> yeah. Sander. Oh, wait, wait, I got, okay, hold on. I got, uh, got a lot of questions to answer. Um, which sample libraries do I use? Um, I make my own. Um, I mean, that's like, you know, what I am. This is like a sample pack sound design company. That being said, there are other sample packs that I use like vengeance packs or whatever, but recently like the only kicks i use are mine i don't use anyone else's kicks same with symbols presets especially like i don't fuck with anyone else's presets um so yeah as far as sample libraries most of the stuff i use is mine um how do i only have 18 viewers love your content thank you so much um i honestly just started streaming today this is like the first like real live stream i've done on tiktok so yeah how do you recommend getting started with learning Ableton? Honestly, by doing what you're doing and watching streams, watching tutorials, and just constantly making music, no matter how good or bad it is. So that is definitely how, what I would recommend. So.
Settler, uh, yeah, actually, why don't we just like add a vocal and I'll show you. So uh, Settler asked tips on pitching vocals like for remixes. So if you drag a vocal into Ableton, let's just find any vocal. Escape. Bass, bass. Uh, Vakratunda Mahakaya Kotisu. So some of these vocals, these are like not mine. I'm just finding like random vocals on here. Okay, let's let's like just use that. I really like like uh, Arabic scales and whatever, uh, like Phrygian scales. I love that shit. So um, pitching a vocal. So it all starts with warping. So if I drag this vocal in here. I'm listening and I'm like, it's not looping perfectly. So first thing you want to do is look at the file. And oftentimes in the file, it will say the key and the BPM. So right here, it says vocal loop 18. It says 128 F. So 128 definitely stands for 128 beats per minute. And F definitely stands for the key. So I can double click on um, the audio file. And then you're going to want to make sure that down here, you're going to want to make sure it's warped. So if you hit warp, then you're going to want to make sure the BPM says 128. A lot of times when you drag a audio file in, it will already be warped and it'll be, you know, BPM matched uh, really well. All right. What if it doesn't have the, the BPM and key? So Ableton does a pretty good job, especially with this new update of like figuring out the BPM, the key you might have to do on your own, but Ableton's new update does do a pretty good job of like figuring out the BPM. So, um, what I'd then like to do is just like loop it and listen and see if it sounds good. Doesn't sound bad, but I know it can sound better. So I'm just going to start dragging these warp markers. Typically what I like to do is make one in the front and make one in the back. So we're dealing with a two bar loop. So right here. So it sounds a little rushed in certain parts. So I'm going to just make this a little longer. And then I'll just start placing uh, warp markers around. All right. And so that's basically it. Um, so let's say I wanted to pitch this. So I know from this information, the key is an F. So let's say I want to pitch it up. Um, it's an F. Let's say I want to go till a, so I'm going to count. I'm going to count F sharp. That's one. Then G then G sharp. That's three. Then a. So. And then what I'm doing is I'm just listening and I'm trying to feel the groove and move these warp markers accordingly to sort of like stretch the vocal out to where I wanted it. All right, let me answer some of these questions. I've been getting a flurry of questions. So uh, on TikTok, let me see. Oh, sorry, hold on. What kick is that? This is uh, my kick. This is coming out in the next uh, Rave Yard pack. We have some cool ones in the previous Raveyard pack I can play that are kind of like this. Um, so we put out a Hard Dance Destruction pack a little bit ago, 
and it's been it's been awesome. I've I'm been really enjoying it. But if we go to the kicks, and some of the gated kicks are super hard styley. But then there's some some really ooh some really rumbly ones. So that's uh really cool. Um. All right. But anyway, let's get back to this. Do you ever go to the transient options? Yeah, we can we can talk about that. I think that's I think the transient options is mostly for. Um, oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. If you're warping vocals right under warp, there's different warp modes. So typically complex or complex pro is the one I go for when what I'm warping is not rhythmic, um, meaning if it's not drums. So if we go to beats mode. You can sound, you can hear it sounds kind of weird. And then if we go to tones mode, sounds a little better. Um, it sounds a little bit more natural. Then there's texture. Sounds pretty cool. Um, it's there's grain size and flux you can play with. Then there's repitch, which I wouldn't recommend unless you're using a percussion loop. I'm not even gonna get into that one, but mainly complex or complex pro. By default, mine's always at complex. So uh, Mackenzie asked, do I play out ever? Uh, yeah, I play. Um, I played a show. When did I play? I played a show with Cloud in LA. It was like an insomniac show. Um, I go by Hellbound. Uh, Rave Yard Sounds is like my production company, um, but I go by Hellbound. And I played out in L.A. Uh, July 15th with Cloud. And that was an Insomniac show at Lot 613. That was insane. And then uh, I'm also playing next weekend in San Diego. And then I'm, I was supposed to be back in L.A. I'm going to be back in L.A. Um, end of August. But then um, I was supposed to play a show. It got rescheduled. But I'm playing in San Francisco uh, beginning of September. What's the most stream song that I've um, the most extreme song? Honestly, I've made a few songs like a while back that are more streamed, but like it, it sucks because Spotify like really just like wants people to see your most streamed song. So it's like a song from like four years ago. That's like not techno at all. You know, it's like almost more like rave, like bass housey, and it's like stupid. I don't like it. But uh, let's keep going on this one. Okay, I think this is the perfect time to talk about how to do a transcape. For whatever reason, it's kind of blowing my mind. Everybody's like, how to do the Fred again effect. And I'm like, the Fred again effect? You just mean like a transcape? So a transcape is a classic, classic sound. And I don't really know how to explain it other than it's basically just like a volume automation. Um, so you can do it multiple ways. You can use LFO tool, you can use ShaperBox, you can use Kilohertz Transgate. You could use just a regular gate and have something side chaining it. You could use volume automation. There's so many ways to do it, but it's just, I think it's just hilarious to see. It's like how to do the Fred again effect. So I want to do the Transgate on, I want to put a Transgate on this vocal. So I'll go from easiest to like more customizable and hard. First thing, Kilohertz Transgate. I mean, it's literally. Like that's it. Yeah, auto pan too, except you can't get, I guess you could if you automated the uh, the rate, but I like this. Like that's the classic, you know? So basically I'll just open up Kilohertz Transgate and boom. And they have different presets in here too.
Are you side chaining? Yeah, I am side chaining. So uh, another quick tip. Let me go back to this. We'll call this vocal. So for a quick side chain, whenever I just want to throw a side chain on, I like using this plugin Kickstart Two. So if I open it up again from scratch, Kickstart Two is just like an auto side chain. Like every quarter note, I have a quarter note selected. It is just constantly side chaining and doing like that quarter note duck. So you can have it on auto mode or you can have it on MIDI mode, which um, you'll then have to route MIDI to this, or you could put it on uh, like audio mode, which means that once it receives an audio signal, it will start side chaining. I just put it on sync because I'm always just ducking everything to the kick. LFO tool does work. Uh, this just saves me like five seconds, like that's it. I don't know, I just like kickstart to a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's my side chain. So this will be a good time to ask, honestly, what are some things that able, oh, hold on. Ableton compression side chain. Oh my God, what's going on? Um, yeah, so okay, Ableton compression side chain I can I can do as well. Let's actually let's actually talk about that. I've done a couple videos where um I've talked about side chaining, but I, I feel like I didn't really like nail it. So the safest or, or the the best way to side chain for techno, since the kicks are so long and rumbly. What I'll do is I'll basically make a new MIDI track and we're going to call this trigger and we're going to get like a short kick in here. So I'll like look for like a trap kick or something and I'll just throw like just this short punchy kick in here. Then I'm going to copy over the MIDI notes from our pattern. So if we listen to this, it's following the same exact pattern as our kick. We're going to turn this off. And then we're gonna go to our vocal um, track and or whatever we wanna sidechain. And we're gonna put a Ableton compressor on here. So by default, this is what everybody's Ableton compressor should look like unless you have some sort of default setup or some preset. What you're gonna to wanna to do first is click this little wave button down here. So this is the show activity view. This is a much better window to look at your sidechain because you can see much clearer like what's actually going on. Then we're gonna hit this side chain toggle button, which will open up this entirely new window over here. Then we'll click the side chain, audio from, and we're gonna select trigger. So now if we press play, we can see the waveform of our kick right here. So in order to engage the side chain, we're gonna have to drag this threshold down until it until we start seeing some movement. And so the reason I like using this short kick is because if we were to set the audio from as our first kick, this the input signal is just a literal brick. Um, it, it, it's just, and you can do stuff with the EQ, but it's just, a, it gets messier. It's just really not worth it. So let's go back audio from, we're gonna set it to the trigger. Now let's talk about the different parts that can help shape the side chain. So you have the threshold, which we already talked about. The threshold is the line that the input signal has to cross in order for the side chain to start working. And depending on how far it crosses that line is basically, how much the compressor is going to turn down whatever track it's on. So that is also determined by the ratio. The ratio, what I like to do typically is leave the ratio at two, leave the attack and the release at the default settings. And I drag the threshold down until I'm like, okay, this sounds good. That amount of ducking, I like that. Um, that rhythm I, I like we're getting closer so then from there 
if I wanted more ducking, like if I if I liked the timing, um, I would turn up the ratio knob, and this will basically, uh, in this will make the duck more intense. And the way you can tell is down here where it says zero dBs. This is a readout of how much gain reduction is happening. So as we turn this ratio knob up, you'll start to see this number go higher. So we started at negative 13 dBs, or we started at 13 decibels of gain reduction. And then as we turned the ratio knob up, it went all the way down to like 30, which is just like a lot. Then from there, I'll just turn the attack all the way down. So how the attack works and how the release work. So as soon as the signal crosses over the threshold, it will take this long for the side chain to actually start happening. So if we turn this attack up, you can see the, the, the line starts to get like a lot more like smooth and, and, and just like not as reactive. And that's because basically what you're telling the compressor to do is once the side, once the input signal crosses the threshold, it's going to take you know, however many milliseconds to for the side chain to come into action. So we want that to be immediate. We want whenever the signal crosses the threshold, we want the side chain to come into effect immediately. The release is the opposite. Once the signal crosses back over the threshold, how long do we want the compressor to still be taking effect before it comes back to normal? And to me, this is this release is very, very reliant. What's my cat doing? This release is is like very dependent on the input signal. And this is why I like to get a short kick like this. Something that sounds natural. Sometimes people use like hi hats or something really small. And I'm like, that doesn't sound natural to me. I, I want to just use like a normal, like punchy kick. And once I do that, I think it sounds really natural. And I think the side chain sounds great. And if we were to freeze this and bring it to a new track. Wait, what? Oh, we got to. If we were to freeze this, bring it to a new track. You can see it's it's removing. It's removing a lot of these. Uh, you know, these these first couple of vocal shots, which is making room for the kick and giving the track that natural pump. So that is how to side chain. Um, does it have to be a kick for the input signal? No, it doesn't have to be a kick for the input signal at all. No, you can side chain anything to anything. And that's where I totally encourage you guys to be super creative. So like I was talking about with the trance gate, you can do creative gating. Um, so if we took the trance gate off and, and rather than, so a gate is the, sidechain gating is going to be the reverse of sidechain compressing anytime a gate is triggered it will allow the audio to come through where when the compressor is triggered it will turn the audio down so if we open up like a serum or something like this and if we can make a similar pattern to the trance gate so it goes ba 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 ba. So I know that we're gonna need one two three one two three. Okay, so it's gonna look like this: two sixteenth notes, and then an eighth note. So this is our gate pattern. We'll call this gate. If we listen to it, so then what we can do is side chain. So there is a side chain on the gate and we can do audio from our gate. So now if we listen to this, let's actually turn the side chain off. If we listen to this gate. What a gate does is every time the vocal or the sound drops below the threshold, it turns off depending on how low you set the floor. So we can set the floor to negative infinity 
Anytime it drops below the threshold, it's going to turn off. So, Mark, your kick does not have to be the input signal. So you could do the same thing with a compressor. I just chose to do it with a gate because we were talking about trans gates. So let's turn on sidechain. We set audio from the gate. Let's make this a little, all these a little shorter. Whoops. So just a, uh, you know, be creative. You can sidechain anything to anything. Uh, something that people do as well is you can sidechain, like currently right now, like I'm streaming, I have the audio from my Ableton sidechain to my voice. So that's sometimes a lot uh, what people do as well. Like in pop productions, if you want to if you have like guitars and pianos coming or going and then the vocal comes in, you might want to side chain the guitars and the piano to the vocal. So the vocal has more room to breathe. Not only can you just side chain the entire. Not only can you just side chain the entire track down, you can side chain in like a multi band kind of thing where you're like, oh, the guitars and the drums and the and the, the pianos are, are really big and they sound great. But when the vocal comes in. I just want to like carve out. I just want to side chain just like this one frequency spectrum. So when you speak, the Ableton audio is reduced. Actually, not on TikTok. You're asking me that on TikTok, not on TikTok, just because I cannot stream um, from OBS through TikTok. I'm using this separate thing. Um, Do I listen to Jan Cook? Um, no, but I have, I don't know what um, their pronouns are. I, I don't think they have their face on, uh, on their YouTube videos, but I watch their YouTube videos. It's fucking, they're awesome. So good. Yo, Frostbite, thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I appreciate everybody who's been watching the videos. It's been, it's been really cool. Um, I saw a question earlier for Ryder. What do I do to combat a beat block? Um, so I am constantly coming in and out of writer's block. So what I like to do to like combat writer's block is take a really experimental approach to making music. So this actually is going to bring me to a really good topic because this is something I want to talk about. But one of my favorite tricks to like combat writer's block is slicing stuff up on a simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a MIDI track and then add a simpler. Now I have a folder filled with sound design takes that I've done. I think I've done like previous videos on, on my TikTok um, on how I do my sound design takes. But whenever I'm like battling a writer's block, what I want to do is have fun. I want to make music producing more fun. So I have this folder of sound design takes and I'll just find like a weird one. Let's find. Let's do this one. So I will drag this into a simpler and then I'm going to select slice mode. So what this is going to do is. This happened last time. It's so weird. Uh, I think it's this new Ableton update. Let me start that over. Um. No, no, Ch Chubby. I, I know. I know Alice. Yen, I'm pretty sure Yen Cook has stuff on YouTube as well. 
Um, I think I know who you're talking about, though, as well. Alice's videos are fucking sick as well. All right. So anyway, whenever I'm in a writer's block, I will typically I'm going to start by dragging a simpler onto a track. And then I have this folder filled with sound design takes. So I'm going to drag this one into a simpler. And then by default, it's on classic mode. I'm going to click slice in this bottom left corner. And what this is going to do is this is going to slice at certain points within the sound design take and assign each one of these slices to a MIDI note. So down here, you can see it says slice by transient. You can click on that and select beat. And this is what I typically like to do. Uh, because it just spaces the slices out a bit more. So from there, I have this kick pattern. And whenever I can't think of like in whenever I can't think of the direction to go in, this is what I'll do because this will like spark some sort of like weird creative idea. So I'm going to work on this one bar. I'm going to loop one bar. I'm going to make a MIDI clip. And I'm going to think about where do I want there to be a note. I'm not going to think about what I want. I'm just going to think about where I want it. I'm trying to think of the rhythm. The uh, Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the rhythm. So let's play this. I'm going to turn the vocal off for now because that's a we can we can include that later. But let's turn the vocal off for now. So I have this one bar MIDI clip. Let's play. And I'm just going to start placing random uh, MIDI notes in. Is it playing anything? Let's turn this up. Yeah. So another thing I want to do is right next to where it says slice by, there's two buttons that say trigger and gate. Um, I want to put on gate because I don't want the note to just play out all the way. So, uh, what's up? I'm a, so how do you send a track for feedback? Can I post a song here? Uh, so no, what you're going to want to do is go to the discord. Um, there's a discord link in a lot of my socials. And then you're going to want to go to this music feedback tab in our discord and then send the songs there. And then I'm going to be going over there at going over them at the end of the stream. So, um, like I said, I have a one bar MIDI clip. I'm really thinking about the rhythm here. So I'm just going to be placing notes where I want there to be a note. So let's. So I like that as a rhythm. And the reason why I like slicing, uh, slicing long sound design takes and simpler is because I can actually move these slices around and get different notes every time I every time I move these slices. So I'm not really feeling these sounds. So this is another reason why I love slicing and simpler. I'm just going to take, I'm just going to bring a new sound design take into uh, simpler and it should re-slice. Come on. Yep, there we go. Now it's re-sliced. And also what I'm going to do is I am going to add this synth power rack. I love the synth power rack. It has OTT, like general compression, echo, reverb, some saturation. And like that is a totally different result than what I had before. Same rhythm, totally different result. I'm also gonna copy this side chain over.
Yeah, these sound design takes are created by me. So a lot of them are just really like old, random. Like I may have like recorded a video off YouTube and then put it through granulator like five or ten times. It's it's it's, in, it's insane. The power rack is a real time saver. I use it all the time. Literally, I, I put this on everything. And I know it's titled synth power, but honestly, I put it on everything. It's crazy. So. So I like that loop, so I'm going to go ahead and resample it. Um, so if I want to resample something to audio, there's a few ways to do it. So you can right click, hit freeze track and then you can highlight the selected region and then control drag down. That will copy it down. Or what you can do is make a new audio track and then in the in and outs tab right here, you can, I by default have it at resampling, but yours might say something else. You can click and select the uh, track that you want. So I'm gonna resample this track 12 and you can select whether you wanna do pre-mixer, post-mixer, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as is, and then I'm going to hit record and just hit record and boom, we have, uh, we have our take right there. So we'll just call this loop one. This might, this might come in handy later. We don't know. Um, and then I'm just going to go through and just change the slice position. That's kind of cool. I might want to like add a little pitch alpha to that. Is the synth power rack built into Ableton? No, this is, um, Anything that says RY in front of it is a Raveyard product. So uh, this synth power rack is, let me see, um, Raveyard sounds. So um, we have our hard dance destruction um, suite that is uh, that includes like some of the Ableton racks, like these instrument racks. These are all like uh, instruments and then uh, processing racks as well. So inside of this right here, this Ableton audio racks, this is, um, I don't know why it's not happening. I need to fix this website. I've been spending so much time sound designing. Um, this hard dance destruction audio racks, this, this has the uh, synth power in it. Um, but let's keep going. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate this track and then resample it. I don't Uh, I don't think I want the pitch on there. I'm going to just. And maybe we'll have another one. So I'm just going to keep going through and trying to find like fun takes. I'm not in love with any of these directions yet. So something else you can do is just move these notes around. You get different slices. I really like that. So I think I'm going to keep that first note there. And so I'm, I'm basically duplicating this track and splitting the parts because I'm going to leave this like this. And now I'm just going to focus on this these uh, second two. Ooh. All right, 
I kind of like that. I'm just going to duplicate it again just in case. Now I'm just going to move forward with this. So then once I have like a nice little loop, I'm going to try to find, um, I'm going to try to find, uh, like other things, but honestly, this sounds so good. And that is why I love using simpler to just like slice things up. Like I just love using simpler for this reason. Slicing is so much fun and it makes music production way more fun too. Maybe let's throw the gate on. Nah, I don't like how that sounds. Uh, this track's 150 BPM. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to re-add a clap. I'm just going to find a clap. All right, let's just use this clap. Let's make a clap pattern. Just take this vocal. <laughs> I like how you do with baby, but I can really beep, 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 beep. DJ take them high. Drop the beat. Beep, 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 beep. Take. I'm going. <laughs> it's grooving. F me. I'm the bass, bass. Hands up. Free your mind. One, two. Yeah. This feels good right here. Beep, beep, beep. Hmm. Let's do. Actually, maybe we won't do.
So I'm going to sound design in acid lead real quick. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to take this out of the group. So this is where I want the uh, acid to be. All right, let's loop this and we'll extend this MIDI across. Let me answer some of these questions. So Zaya, you think the methodology of making a beat is similar to painting? Absolutely. It's such a good comparison because I always will find myself, maybe I'll say, oh, I want to paint a picture and then I'll start painting. Maybe I want to paint like this big thing of like a lake and a tree and a mountain. And it's like I spend so much time on the tree and then I'm like, my inspiration just goes out the window. So it's definitely very comparable. Uh, you can't get stuck in, in the little details um, you have to just continue to push forward and just like when you come back, um, that's where, or, or when you, when you're finished, like the macro arrangement, that's when you want to go back in and, uh, do the details. And that's something I, I really struggle with. Um, and then let me see, do you ever make Shron's techno? Yeah, I, I do. It's been something I've definitely been messing around with uh, a little bit more. Um, it's not really like what I f overall lean to, but um, it's cool. So, um, all right, we have this serum here. I want to design this acid sound. So that is our pattern. So in order to sound design an acid sound, what I like to do is start with this saw wave. I'll make sure we're in the correct octave. So I'm going to drop oscillator a down negative two, uh, negative two octaves. And then everything with an acid sound is about the envelopes and the filter. So I want to make like a distorted acid sound. So, um, I'm going to use a band pass. This is like a classic pattern. So from there, I'm going to take envelope two and I'm just going to put a little bit of movement on the cutoff. And that's a little bit much, but what I want to do is right off the bat, I'm going to take this first macro, apply it to the cutoff. And then the second macro, I'm going to go into the matrix and then go to where it says envelope two filter cutoff. I'm going to set the aux source to macro two. So this is going to be our envelope amount. And then this uh, first macro is going to be our cutoff. So now we have control over how much envelope is being applied and where in the frequency spectrum the filter is going to sit. Then what we can do, turn the resonance up a little. Turn the drive up the fat. Then what we're going to do is go into the effects and we're going to turn on distortion. And this is just a taste um, real quick. Thomas, right. Can anyone learn themselves to make techno or does it take a lot of learning time? Anything takes a lot of learning time, but anybody can learn everything. I am a true believer of that. Uh, I'm self-taught in music in general. Um, granted, I've t I took like guitar lessons when I was younger, but music production, entirely self-taught, never had any like formal training or anything. I mean, you, you can learn anything from watching videos and talking to friends, you know? So by adding this distortion, we're really like crunching this acid sound and getting that classic acid sound. So what I normally like to do next is put on delay and reverb. And the, what I like to do with the with the delay is take the left and the right to eighth notes and then below that, drag it to dotted. And then we're going to turn on ping pong.
And depending on what our MIDI pattern is, I may actually not do dotted, uh, dotted eighth notes and just do eighth notes. Then I'll apply a little bit of filtering and turn the mix down. Then we can turn the reverb on. And that's starting to sound really good. Um, what I want to do is we have these two other macros left that are definitely going to come in handy. So for this third macro, I'm going to put this on the decay of envelope two. And this is going to allow us to control the decay of our filter envelope. There we go. Now that's sounding a lot better. Then something we can play with is like some um, stereo effects. So maybe like we want to put like hyper and dimension. I don't really like that. Maybe we'll try detuning. That sounds better. So for this fourth macro, we'll put this on the detune and then we'll call this detune. This is where I'm gonna go back to synth power. I just love it, I throw it on everything. Uh, maybe I'll just wanna use some of these presets, like basic boost. So literally, synth power just makes everything sound super fat. So let's go ahead and we'll take this MIDI clip over here. Let's do a different pattern. So something I actually want to show you guys is how to use Fascion 2 as a sequencer. This is something I've been doing a lot lately and it's been saving me so much time. So what we can do is open up Fascion 2. I'm going to just make this a little smaller. Um, wait, what? Oh, here we go. All right, so Fascion 2, if we just press play, It is a acid sequencer um, and it's an acid synth. But what we can actually do is take this acid patch we just made in Serum. And we can, where this says all ins, we can go down to where it says Fascion 2 and select Fascion 2. And then where it says post effects, we're going to select Fascion 2 again. Then we're going to have to select this in button. And what this is going to do is if we press play, it's get, we're actually getting MIDI from Fascion 2. But what we're going to have to do next is turn the octave up. So the reason I like to do this is because I actually love experimenting with uh, different... Uh, I love experimenting with different... Uh, like these random patterns in, in Fascion 2. So let's open up Serum as well, and we'll open up Fascion 2. And what I'm gonna do is just start, I'm gonna draw, or I'm gonna select like, I'm just gonna generate random MIDI patterns from Fascion 2, and it's going to be actually sequencing the Serum patch. <laughs> So 
So what you can do is you can actually select like what kind of scale or what kind of algorithm you want. So I picked this Eastern acid and we're just gonna like see what that comes up with. So below here we can hit draw and this will draw new MIDI patterns. And then below here we can select the amount of notes that we want. And I love that this like populates in real time. And then we can also select the amount of slides we want and the amount of accents we want. So something that we're also gonna have to do real quick is inside of this serum patch, I'm gonna take this velocity, I'm gonna start velocity mapping this. So we're gonna take the velocity, map it to the cutoff, and we're gonna map it to the decay. And what this is gonna do is every time there's a higher velocity input, it's gonna put the cutoff a little higher and also make the decay a little longer. So let's just pick different ones. There's there's some random ones in here. If you don't like any of these algorithms, you can see that some of these selections are actually highlighted. So you can pick whatever notes you want. So I think we were in the key of D before. So I'll say D and D sharp. And then I'll highlight some of these octaves. And now. And to me, that sounds so good. So what we can do is, and actually my homie Steel showed me this. If we go to export, we can drag this MIDI file right onto our serum track. And then once we've done that, we can select off and now, now it's playing right from the MIDI. Like that just sounds so good. Like I, I love that. So yeah, using Fascion 2 to just generate awesome MIDI patterns, I've been doing it like crazy and it's been so helpful to me. So one of the last things I really wanna talk about and everybody has been asking me about it is this synth power rack. So if we listen to this acid. <laughs> Like on and off, that is night. That is a night and day difference. So what I wanna do is just open this up and show you what's going on inside and, and why this is just such a like surefire way to make your sound like way fatter. So inside we have, we have, so inside we have a reverb, echo, a compressor, overdrive, OTT, auto pan, multiband compressor, an EQ, and two saturators. So by default, everything is off. So when you turn it on and off, there is no difference. But I have this mapped, so as you start to adjust these macro knobs, you can get different results. I wanted to make sure that I was designing a, a rack that was very simple in the way it processes things. So it doesn't get too crazy too fast, but you can get it there. Um, so this first macro knob, general comp. Let's close all the ones that are not affecting it. This general compression knob is affecting this compressor and this multiband compression. 
So if we listen. It's compressing the signal on a single band, and then it's also compressing with this multi-band compression preset, which is absolutely just like one of the classics in Ableton. So then the next knob we have is echo. This is the echo preset I find myself using the most, and it is a eighth note with a ping pong delay and a bit of a filter. So this, uh, this macro knob is just turning up the dry wet. Then for our next, we have our next macro is reverb. This macro knob is actually controlling two, and it's the dry wet. Hold on. This macro knob is actually controlling two parameters. It's the dry wet, and it's also the decay. So as this macro is turned up, the decay and the dry wet are being turned up as well. So it gets this feeling like it's getting bigger. Um. So this next knob, this drive knob, there's actually two drive knobs. I need to rename this, but um, this is overdrive. Um, hold on. Let's just keep it here for now. So this first drive knob is an overdrive. So let's go ahead and And what it's doing is I have an overdrive in here and the drive is all the way up. The frequency band is all the way up. And what this is doing is it's turning the dry wet up. And what you're going to hear is you're going to hear like this really compressed and distorted layer start coming up from below and start filling in the background. And that's what I want. And also, if you want to absolutely smash it, you can turn it up more, but. It just crunches it really nice. So then for this next macro knob, we have OTT. Everybody's familiar with OTT. Sometimes it sounds great. Sometimes it sounds terrible. It's there if you want it. I usually use it in small doses. And what's also nice is you'll notice when this macro knob is at zero, the OTT is turned off completely. So there is there is nothing going through it. Same with this multiband compressor. Sometimes these introduce phasing when they're on, even if, with the amount at zero. So I, ha I just have them both turned off when uh, these are at zero. Uh, so the next thing we have is a pan. So this is just a really fun thing to do. So if I turn the echo and reverb up and I turn the pan width up. It just gives like a very interesting stereo effect. So sometimes just introducing a little bit of pan uh, makes the sound just so much more interesting. Uh, and then we have a high boost and this is just EQ with a high boost simple, but sometimes that's what I want. Sometimes I'm like, Oh, I want it to be brighter. And instead of reaching for anything else, just reach for an EQ and boost the highs. Then the final thing we have is this, um, close this final thing we have in here is this drive. And this is a, just a saturator and it, it just on, on soft sign mode, you can adjust what kind of saturation is going on. And this is really fun to do, but for the most part, I like it on soft sign and I just turn it up and like the OTT and everything else by default, the, uh, the saturator is off when it's at zero and then it turns on as I turn it up. And I just think it sounds really good. And since we have a rack going on, we can just spam this random button and get so many different results. <laughs> I'm sorry if I just blew your ears out, but you can get some crazy stuff.
All right, let me answer some of these questions. Um, oof, hold on. Oh, geez, what am I doing? Um, favorite hard techno producer? Um, honestly, there's so many. I've really been liking Charlie Sparks like for a while. I just love his grooves. I love the simplicity, and it sounds like he's having fun. You know, nothing sounds too serious you know music theory purists might argue that some things don't make sense it doesn't matter it's fun that's all that matters people are dancing all that matters and that's something that i try to tell myself so um yeah that's why i really like his music i feel like i can hear hear it in his music um maybe i'm wrong maybe he's having a terrible time but it doesn't sound like it, it sounds like he's having a good time all right uh one last thing i want to talk about and that's how to use a saturator this is something that I've gotten a, a, a couple requests for, but um, generally I just wanna show you guys how to use the saturator. And I think the best um, way to showcase it is using a clap. So I'm gonna get this 909 clap in here. Or actually let's, let's find a, let's find a different clap. All right. I'm gonna take this clap right here. This is a uh, just a random clap I have on my computer. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the importance of a saturator. So if we solo this. If we hit tab, we can actually see where this sound is peaking. So it's peaking at negative four. So what a saturator is really good for is a adding harmonics, but it's also really good for controlling the peak volume of a sound and allowing your track to have more headroom when used throughout your project. So let's say we have this clap right here. Let's say I want to put an EQ on it. Automatically, if I start EQing this clap, It doesn't sound that much louder, but if we go and look at the peak readout, we're at 1.95. So we've just introduced more. So we've just lost some, some of the headroom that we had. So if we add like a reverb, it's also changing the amount of headroom we have. If we turn on a saturator, let me actually delete. I have a I have a default like saved preset. Vaults, audio effects, saturator. All right. So we have this saturator on here. The first thing I will suggest when you're using a saturator, right click, turn high quality mode off. If this is on, you can. If this is on, it will not actually clip at zero. So let's go back. So just know that it will not act as a true clipper. Turn high quality mode off and it will it will clip at, at true zero. So then what I would do is make a group. Or actually, hold on. Let me let me see how to use this. Let me let me figure this out. So when I'm using a saturator, I'm using it for two things. I'm either trying to add grit and character and harmonics to my sound, or I'm trying to increase the headroom. So what you can do is if I'm playing this clap, we can see that it is at negative 4.3. That is the peak. With high quality turned off, I like to use digital clip. And what we can do is we can turn this drive up and then let's turn the drive to five and the output to negative five. So it sounds the exact same volume, but we just shaved so much, so much dBs off the peak of this sound. So without it, peaking at negative two with it, 
peaking at negative nine. Now people ask how to get your track loud, and this is exactly it. If you start doing this throughout your song, throughout your project, on things that really need it, um, not every single sound can benefit from this type of processing, but things like clap, certain percussion sounds, synth sounds especially, you can make something louder and also increase the amount of headroom in your track at the same time using things like saturators. And I actually like using saturators over compressors for this because it just sounds a lot more natural to me. Compressors introduce like all this type of pumping. It's not amazing. So that is how you can get stuff loud in your track by using saturators throughout. So that's like one last thing I really wanted to talk about. And now I think I want to get into some of this track feedback. For uh, everybody on TikTok who maybe hasn't seen one of my streams before, um, if you go to the Discord, if you join my Discord, there is a music feedback channel where people can submit their tracks. And I see already uh, Settler did it. And uh, I don't know who else did, but I, I remember seeing Settler's name in the, uh, in the uh, what's it called? In the chat. All right, so I'm going to start. And let's start listening to some of these tracks. Also, for those of you who have been watching my live streams and also like watching my TikTok videos, like I seriously appreciate you guys. Like you have no idea. Like I just started this like company a couple months ago and to see how fast the growth has been, it's been absolutely wild. It still hasn't hit me. So I appreciate that. One last thing before we start, I just got a comment. Can you show the difference in the mix? Yeah, I'll play. It's literally not going to sound any different. So real quick, and then I'm going to get back into it, I promise. Let's look at the acid as well. I'll turn the drive down. I'm going to turn the side chain off. So this acid line is peaking at negative 7.6. Let's go ahead. We'll put a saturator on, turn off high quality, go to digital clip, and let's turn the drive up five, the output out five, uh, negative five. Just like that. We just saved five dBs of headroom. So this is all going to add up. The mix down is like a giant math problem. All these numbers are going to add themselves up. And when it hits the master and hits the limiter, that is what matters. It's the numbers. Like at the end of the day, your mix has to sound good, you know, but you want everything to be, have as much headroom as possible before it hits the limiter and the compressor because it'll sound a lot more natural. And I promise if you just do this in small doses throughout your track, like I did here, like I'm going to unsolo this and so we're just saving so much headroom by doing this. And this is the preset that I like to use the most is saturator digital clip uh with high quality turned off analog clip is great too i just like digital clip i think it just sounds a little bit sharper so another quick tip if you have a preset that you really like like this is my saturator preset of choice high quality off drive at zero output at zero you can right click hit save as default preset and now every time you go to open up a saturator, it will be that preset. So another little fun fact. Um, I'm gonna go crazy with the high quality saturator <laughs> trick and then calm down. Yeah, I swear the high quality is the reason why it's it it uh 
the high quality mode is the reason why it's not a clipper. So I, I just use saturator as like a, a straight up clipper. Um, like let's just real quick do a test just to show you guys. I'm gonna put the saturator on here and let's do a clap. We're gonna do just quarter note claps and I'm gonna put a utility before the saturator. So if we turn high quality mode on and we hit tab so we can see the readout, watch, just watch your ears. As I turn the utility up, you can see that we're clipping here. It, it just doesn't matter. So then if you literally right click and turn high quality off, no longer clipping. So maybe I'll take this output to negative 0.1. And then I'll right click, save as default preset, never clipping. So that is what I mean by turn the high quality mode off. So anyway, I digress. I am going to listen to your tracks now. <laughs> Yo, Ben, what's good? What's good? Yo, 3 a.m. disco in the chat. Absolutely insane techno producer. I uh, I started seeing his like videos on TikTok. I'm like, just one after the other. I'm like, God damn, this kid rips. Uh, so Settler asked, do I create my own samples with drum computers and stuff? Um, I usually will take a bunch of presets and process them for kicks and claps. I'll synthesize snares. I'll synthesize. This is really sick. So yeah, um, at this point in the drop, I'm hearing this like, I don't know, like the clap sounds cool. It just sort of sounds a little like distracting, but uh, overall like really sick. And then, yeah, I think the side chain could be turned down in general too. There's a lot of side chain going on, but sick track overall. This one is just a sketch. Sounds like a pretty damn good sketch so far to me. Yo, what? My God. Yo, this is so good. Oh my God.
Yo, that was ridiculous. Whoever, sh whoever you are, show yourself. My God, I did not. I didn't. When you when you started off by saying just a sketch, I'm thinking this is going to be a sketch. Like that sounded so good. I'm like. The demos are getting so good. was dope. Woo! I know that sound. Let's go. Crazy. Changing my profile pic. This is crazy. Ah, RIP track not found. Oh my god, there's another one?
Do you know how to hard groove techno like Clark? Uh, I, I mean, I could probably figure it out. I'm not gonna just do it right now. Uh, but I think I might have to jump into that when I get off the stream. That track was crazy. There was like so many ideas in there. Really sick. I'm gonna have to speed up a little bit. I gotta eat. Super sick. That is wild. Um, yeah, I wrote some uh I wrote some feedback.
That was really dope so yeah um the song I, I love giving feedback on songs like this because it's like one little thing away uh you know some songs are like there's there's so many issues that it's like the only feedback i can give is like just keep writing more songs you know but this one is like the songwriting is great um i think what it's really missing is like the it's it feels like the energy level is like here the whole time like it's just riding like it, it kind of goes like up and like here but you can add more tension like during buildups like it's such a fucking edm thing to do but it like really works um you can um yeah you can just create like tension in the builds and then that release will be that much better you know Yo, so um, for those who are wondering, for right now, um, I'm going to be streaming every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'm in Philly, so I'm the Eastern, uh, I'm the East Coast. So uh, yeah, Thursday, 5 p.m. Love the open hats. Also, if you guys don't mind, anybody who's in the chat and interacting, tell me where you guys are from. I'm trying to like figure out where everyone is because I know there's some people from Europe in the chat, people in America in the chat, but like I really don't know. So just let me know. I, I would love to know. I'm from Philly. I'm, uh, I'm in the US. And Fabian, yeah, I uh, I review everything. I don't care. Send me everything. Ooh, from Chile. That's cool. <laughs> That's wild. Hey, <laughs> one other person from the United States. Okay, two. Oh, three. I like the songwriting on this a lot. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be cool. So, 
So for anybody wondering, you can submit uh, your songs to my Discord. And you can find my Discord link in like my social bios. Um, I think it's any one of my my socials, like you'll be able to find the Discord link. And then you're gonna wanna submit music to the music feedback channel. A lot of Germans in the chat. <laughs> I still have never been to Europe. I gotta go. Love that reverse. Yeah, I need to go to Europe so bad. Like, I would love to, like, get there and, and, you know, have some sort of, like, show to play so I could just, like, have a little money to, like, run around and be a little animal in Europe, but whatever. You guys see my cat cleaning himself? So good, I love that. Uh-oh. Got an indoor track. Dude, I dust my keyboard more than you think, but my cat lays on my keyboard like all the time. So it's like, I'll take the keys off, I'll take the keycaps off everything and and go through it and then he just lays on it it's like it's it's a losing battle i can't i can't keep up so if you're asking where to send demos go to my discord and submit your uh demo in the music feedback section you can find the discord link Ooh. You can find the Discord link in uh in my socials. We need that indoor null sec EP. Oh, 
My cat is still cleaning himself. Like... Yo, Luca Lush in the chat. What's good, brother? Yo. Oh, God, come on. This is so sick. This is really sick. I'm gonna get go to the the next one. Um, got that one. I'm gonna grab my phone charger real quick. I'll be right back. All right, we back. Sick groove. Let's go. I love this shit. God, finish that shit. Send it to me. So sick. Love that. Good lord, this kick. I 
I love kicks like this. I love this shit. Super dark, like, spooky, evil shit. Like, I love it. Honestly, that's, like, the kind of shit I love to make. And, like, I don't know. I just always get this feeling like it's... Like, people aren't going to get it. Maybe that's because, like, I live in America and just in this stupid fucking non-techno bubble. But this is the kind of shit I really fucking love. In early 1941, with World War II reaching in Europe, the United States Army Air Corps, or USAC, had concerns regarding the range of its bomber force. With the fall of Britain still a potential reality, it would require a bomber with transcontinental capability and sufficient range to strike the targets of the world from the basis in Newfoundland. To fill this need, it issued specifications for a very long-range bomber in 1940. Only two contractors could double the challenge, consolidated the both. After a brief design competition, consolidated won the development. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. That kick. I love that kick. It is fucking crazy. Bum. Oh my god. Jesus. Yo, this is sick. I'm following you anyway. <laughs> Jesus born is Jason Christ. <laughs> He's hyped. Yo, this is... That was insane. I'm like... 
I don't even know. I feel bad for whoever's song I have to play next. No, I'm just kidding. But that was so sick. Little vibe switch up. God, my cat just paused it. <laughs> okay, this is why the keyboard's never clean, guys. How? How am I supposed to clean this keyboard? When he's laying on it like this. This is why the keyboard's never clean. No, I'm not skipping your track. Look at that little face. <laughs> oh my God. So if you guys want to submit your tracks, go to uh, my Discord. That's a really sick song. Honestly, I like forgot what I was doing. Um, and that I think is the best compliment of all is like I was so zoned out that I forgot I was listening to somebody else's track. Like I wasn't even thinking about it in an analytical way. I was just like vibing. My cat wants to leave. I'm going to pause and let my cat out. All right, you're out. You're out. Let's go. All right, I'm going to listen to two more and then I got to go eat. So the next two are. Okay, we only have one more. Perfect, this is it.
<laughs> I love that. Really sick. So dope. I'm gonna go into the next one because I gotta make some dinner and feed my pets. Really sick track though. Super sick. Uh, I fuck with it. Um, anyway, I got to end it there. I'm exhausted. I've been working all day on tunes. And then, uh, yeah, but yo, I seriously appreciate you guys tuning in. This was a great stream. They keep getting better and better, and it's just awesome to see. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys. I'm streaming every Thursday, uh, every Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Feel free to just keep sending me tracks on the Discord. I'm, like, trying to check that more frequently, but... um. Seriously appreciate you guys tuning in, especially like this was the first TikTok stream I ever did. Uh, and it was great. Like being able to connect with you guys on TikTok has been awesome too. So cool to see everyone around the world too. Like it's wild, honestly. Like I I like most of the people I feel like that tune into these streams or like my videos or whatever are like not from America, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, it was a great stream. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see y'all.